It's very exciting news that on July 19th, the CDC authorized the use of another COVID-19 vaccine from Novavax. What makes this vaccine different is that it is based on a different vaccine technology. It's a protein-based vaccine. Protein-based vaccines have been used in the United States for over 30 years. And so this may be an option for those individuals that have not yet been vaccinated because they were concerned about the messenger RNA technology. So the Novavax vaccine that was authorized by the CDC is a two-dose primary series at this point. And it, so it would be intended for those 18 years of age and older that have not yet been vaccinated in the United States. We do anticipate that there will be booster dose development over time and perhaps even expansion to other age groups. But for now it's 18 and above, two dose primary series, given 21 days to eight weeks apart for those 18 years and older. So when we think about other vaccines that have used the protein-based uh, formulations, some of those that have been used for a number of years include hepatitis B. That was the first vaccine developed over 30 years ago. We also use that technology for flu vaccine and some of the childhood vaccinations such as whooping cough. The side effects of this vaccine are very similar to what we see with other protein-based vaccines such as the influenza vaccine or other COVID-19 vaccines. So the most common things that you may see would be pain at injection site, perhaps a little bit of fatigue the day after uh, you get the injection. You may have mild headache, mild fever, and some mild joint and muscle pain. One of the things that you may be hearing is that there's some concern about vaccine efficacy waning over time, especially with the newer variants that are circulating. Currently in the United States, as well as in Virginia, BA5 is the predominant uh, variant and BA4 closely behind that. The vaccines that were originally developed were not developed for these variants. And so while they still provide very good coverage, very good protection against serious illness, hospitalization and death, we do know that they're not as robust about, against just preventing disease. So there are a couple things that are happening right now. The FDA is working with all vaccine manufacturers to develop variant specific vaccines with the goal of having those vaccines available by the fall in the United States. Additionally, the Novavax vaccine that was just approved while it was developed when before Omicron was, was, was circulating and when other variants were predominant, some recent information out of Australia as well as the United Kingdom shows that a booster dose, which is not yet authorized in the US, but may be soon, a booster dose actually has very good efficacy, efficacy against Omicron. So there are several options that we expect will be available over the next few months. So stay aware and informed about your options for those booster doses. Novavax actually was part of the original Operation Warp Speed, and Novavax has been available in other parts of the world for some period of time. But when they got ready to launch in the United States, there were some manufacturing capacity concerns, and Novavax wanted to make sure that they had the full capacity to support what the United States needed, hence why they waited until earlier this spring to present information to the Food and Drug Administration for authorization. Riverside is currently working with Virginia Department of Health on when the Novavax vaccine will be available for us to order. We know the United States has purchased doses of this vaccine, so like all of the other COVID-19 vaccines, it will be provided free of charge. As soon as it's available, Riverside does intend to offer this vaccine both to team members that perhaps have not yet been vaccinated because of a medical or religious exemption due to messenger RNA vaccines or at community-based clinics.